Welcome. In front of me is a Huawei MatePad Pro and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks that I can do on this device. So we're going to begin with the dark mode, which allows you to turn the system-wide dark mode. As you can see, everything right now is in light, so if you go into the settings as an example, it will be all white. But if we go to the notification panel where you can find a toggle, so for me it's right over here, but the position of it may vary, keep that in mind. Once you tap on it, everything will turn dark. As you can see, it does turn your notification panel dark, then if you go into apps, it will also turn them dark. Uh, that includes majority of the installed apps. So let me just quickly get this. Although it does not include all of them, so it looks like it does not include uh, the music, but things like browser are in dark mode. If you go into gallery, it's in dark mode. So majority of the apps that come pre-installed with the device will be, and also apps that you might download, assuming the developer added the support for it, also will be included. Then moving on, we're gonna go into the gesture navigation, which I already have enabled, but by default you will have the normal triple uh, buttons on the bottom, uh, which also shift the entire page a little bit up to accommodate well, the space that they take. And to get enabled, or to enable the navigation as I have right now, all you need to do is go to settings and scroll all the way down to system and update where you will have system navigation. And in here you have the three uh, key navigation, so that's what we usually have as you can see, this thing. But you can tap on gestures and when you tap on start it will give you a tutorial on how to use it. So swipe from the side to go back and that works from either side. Swipe up from the bottom to go home like so, and swipe and hold to go to recent. Now, at this moment on here, it works uh, a little bit better, I would say, on the tutorial rather than on the uh, device itself. So it's sometimes a little bit wonky when you're trying to slide up. And uh, a, good, uh, a good tip to, well, for usability is when you're holding the device, you want to swipe from like the, basically outside of the screen up. Um, if you try to swipe on the screen, sometimes it won't really register, so the best way to do it is go from off the screen and then slide up. So, in this case, you will have, uh, I would say, the most accurate way of well, this recognizing the gesture. Uh, now, the gestures in here work really well, in my opinion. I'm using myself a Huawei device as well, although I have a normal phone. And it works, well, the gestures are exactly the same as on here. And just a good thing is to try to swipe from outside of the screen itself when you're trying to go back or home and then you will have no problem using them. Now it does sometimes get, get a, take a little bit of time to get used to them, um, but once you do, I, in my opinion, they're way better than the normal buttons that, you, you, that you're used to having. Then moving on to another thing would be the split screen which in here it's a little bit weird. Um, so you have also a gesture for it um, and it's basically the back as you can see. So in normal circumstances when you are in a page like so, uh, you have the back button. When you slide you can see it up here and this regard the completely uh, fingerprint magnet display. It looks kind of terrible on the um, dark mode. So let me just go to light where it won't be as visible. So. When you slide, you can see that there is an arrow. Now, if you slide even further, it will open up the split screen window right here. So, when you let go, you can now choose another app to split screen with. And in this case, it doesn't really work as, uh, as well, I would say. Um, it creates this kind of tiny phone-sized window, which you can basically use well, for instance, calculator in this case, along with uh, your settings. Now, this is not limited to only this, you can use other apps with it. Uh, and you can also move that around if you want to, move it to the side, like so. And you can have a normal usability out of this. Now it does close both of them up when you go home. And uh, it looks like you can get it from recent, but yeah. Now you can also put it in full screen if you want to by tapping right over here 
although I don't really, I haven't really found a way to go split screen as you used to where basically the line and one is on one side and the other one is on the other side. I'm pretty sure there is a way, I just haven't really messed around long enough with this device to figure it out. So this is just a normal window and quickly try to get it. It doesn't really seem like there is a and there is a normal way. But moving on, another thing that I'm going to show is well, not really a tweak or a trick. It's uh, more of an app and uh, or a web page. So when you go into your browser, you want to go to APK PR, as you can see right over here. And this is a site with a bunch of apps. And from here. If you can't find your desired app on the app gallery, because as we know, uh, app gallery doesn't really contain every Play Store app. It just has the ones that developer decided to well port over. Um, so you're kind of limited by the uh, developer willingness to move them over here. Although it's for them should be beneficial to move their apps over here. Uh, they don't all do it, so you might not always find your desired app here. And it's a good good way to find apps that might not have been ported over in here. So this will just, in a way, copy all the apps that are on the Play Store, or more popular apps, um, and you can try to look for it over here. Uh, if you can't find it on the app gallery, you might be able to find it over the APK Pure. Now, the website itself has also a way to, for you to have the uh, app itself, as you can see, using APK Pure app, you can download that and have it as a standalone app, kind of like a Play Store app. Um, although, you can still just go on their website and download everything from here by simply just tapping on whatever you want and tapping the download, as you can see right over here. Now, one thing too that I will mention right now, if you're like me and you will see right here, popular apps, um, Play Store, and you try to download, uh, don't bother with the Play Store. Without the Play Services, Play Store won't be working at all. And I can actually show it to you fairly quickly, uh, just so you don't make the same mistake uh, with bothering with it. So let's allow install. I'm gonna top them down and try one more thing also on here while I'm recording at YouTube. We'll see if that works as well. So let's top download. Now I haven't tried YouTube. It, this actually might work, um, but I guess we'll see. And let's top on that. Can I rename this to APK? That would be nice. Apparently I can't from here. Um, so as you can see there is the Play Store. So let's tap on it. As you can see without the Play Service it just keeps on crashing. So it's virtually useless at the moment. Now I'm gonna quickly try to rename the thing that I downloaded. So let's go in here and into the downloads and find our YouTube and see if that will work as well. seem to find it for some reason. Hmm. Oh, there it is. So let's try it from here. Oh, apparently it doesn't work. Now I'm not sure, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I haven't really tried that, but you can try to mess around with it. As you will see, if we go back to actually right here, there is fairly decent amount of the apps. Now it might be just that the 
uh, default Google Apps because YouTube is part of the Google Apps it won't really work well. Um, but you can still try around some of them. Now, like I said, not every one of them will work. Play Store will not. Uh, but every other app that is that you can see that don't use um, Google as their well, services should work just fine. So you can try anything else, for instance, that you see right here or here, and it will just work fine. But things like the Play Store, uh, YouTube, probably Gmail, um, and maps and stuff like that might have some problem and some tinkering around to get it working correctly. But then moving on to the last thing that I want to show is more of a um, handy uh, tip to keep in mind when you're trying to connect to Wi-Fi or let somebody connect to your Wi-Fi. We go into the settings and Wi-Fi. So um, as an example, you have a Wi-Fi that let me just connect to one right here. So once you connect to your Wi-Fi, like I just did, um, you can share that Wi-Fi password without actually giving the password away. Um, for instance, you might want to do that if you have set the same password for your Wi-Fi as you have for your I don't know, personal email or stuff like that. Then it's just a nice way to do it. Now, the way you would actually get it going is you simply tap on it and it gives you this um, the name of the network and then the QR code as you can see right over here and what the QR code allows you to do is take your device For instance, like I have one right over here. Let me just Cancel that quick. So as you can see I have my device right over here It's also a Huawei and all I need to do is go into my camera app From here. I'm gonna go into the button right here for the AI camera and it opens up the QR scanner. Now this is also easily accessible, I'll show you in a second, um, through your home screen. But all you do is just scan the QR and it shows you the network of it and then allows you to connect to it as you can hopefully see right here. You just simply tap connect, but for me it's gonna get all wonky because I'm basically creating that network myself on this device right now. But moving on, uh, if we go home, you will see right here in the search bar you have the same button so you just tap on it allow it and it opens up the qr scanner and you do the same thing just scan the qr code and it will give you that pop-up to connect so you can do it both ways if you want to and it's just an easy way to allow people to connect to your wi-fi without actually uh, needing to remember the password yourself or give away your password if it's uh, more if it's used for additional uh, accounts rather than just being standalone for your Wi-Fi and yeah so this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching